All right. Good afternoon, everyone, and welcome to our class of 2023 Adobe Digital Media Academy project presentation. Uh, we ask that you please turn off your camera and microphone during the presentation unless you are the, um, one of the students presenting or if you're asking a question. Uh, this will just help us save on the bandwidth for the call and make sure it runs smoothly and allow everyone to hear and see the presentation. Uh, the chat window on your right hand side is open if you have any technical issues or want to comment on the presentation feel free to do that um, however please reserve any questions you have until the end of the presentation we did um, reserve some time at the end to allow you to comment on the students work or ask any questions you have about their process or designs i'm so excited that you have joined us today to see these amazing students and what they've come up with um, as you may or may not know i am christina council and i am the academy coordinator here at middle creek high school and my job is to help coordinate these kind of educational opportunities for our academy students um, the students in this class have all expressed an interest in careers in graphics animation audio and video production and um, web design and development and they've all committed themselves to completing the adobe academy course pathway and part of being an academy member um, means that you're participating in these larger cross-curriculum projects so um, every year our students and our teachers try to outdo the class before them and i think that this is just another example of raising the bar for our, our students um, these sophomores have worked diligently in this new online environment um, over the last few months of the semester to create a branding campaign for the Middle Creek High School academic departments. So there are a ton of little intricate pieces that kind of went into this project. Um, I've been so impressed to see how these students work together and demonstrated so many of the soft skills that um, you need to go into the workplace, and then also the technical skills that are matching what industry professionals are doing in graphic design. Before we begin, I wanted to thank a few people that made this project possible. Uh, first, our principal, Ms. Peckham, who um, gave us the creative, creative freedom and encouraged our students to take, um, take on this challenge to enhance the overall image of Middle Creek. Um, I'd also like to thank our department chairs at Middle Creek. Some of, some of them are already in this meeting actually. Um, thank you for responding to our students' questions and um, working collaboratively with us to give us some insight into your individual departments. Um, thank you Middle Creek High School admin and teachers, the academy parents that are joining us today, our, our academy board members and business community members. We have lots of former academy students and current academy students on this call as well, supporting each other. I really appreciate you all taking time out of your busy schedules to be here and, and really show that you support our students and what they're working on. A big shout out to our CTE central office supporters, Joanne Honeycutt, Naomi Cotton, Phil Vice, and Gail McDougall, who all are doing so much behind the scenes to make these academies possible. Um, and finally, I'd like to recognize our truly amazing academy teachers who spend hours upon hours of their outside of their normal work days, um, put an extra effort to make these experiences possible for our students. Um, Mr. Petty and Ms. Da Silva have truly guided these students to excellence. Um, and that's all I've got for you guys. So prepare to be blown away by this project and I'm gonna go ahead and let Jenna take it away. Um, welcome to the sophomore Adobe Digital Media Academy class presentation. In this project, we were tasked with creating an academic brand identity for Middle Creek High School that highlights the school's STEM accreditation and incorporates all academic departments and their unique offerings. In order to accomplish this, we set three goals for the project. Create an academic logo for the school as a whole, create department logos that fit into the academic logo, and finally, create one pagers for each academic department to be used at school-related special events and open houses. We started by learning about the principles of logo design. We learned that a good logo must be simple, memorable, timeless, versatile, and appropriate. Then we set out to create an academic logo for the school as a whole. We really wanted the logo to highlight our STEM accreditation and also showcase all nine academic departments. From here, we voted as a class on our top three favorites and narrowed it down to these. Then we left the, the, the decision up to Principal Peckham and she chose this design as our new logo. Now that we had our vision set, we got to work in teams to create a logo and informational one-pager for each academic department. 
We decided as a class on a design for one pagers and created a template in Adobe InDesign that could be tweaked to include the necessary information, color scheme, and branding for each department. We decided that each one pager would include the following components. The department name and logo, along with colored banners to match, an inspirational quote, an overview, a list of course offerings, and three content-specific images. I'm going to hand it over now to the team that was responsible for working on deliverables for the arts department. Hello, my name is Molly Klump. I, along with my teammates, Wyatt Turner and Anna Shakanowski, was responsible for working on branding for the arts department. After communicating with Mrs. Garrett, the department chair for the arts department, we used the information she gave us and began working on a brand identity document to capture the essence of the department. This gave us a place to organize all of our ideas. In order to effectively go about creating a logo design, we needed inspiration. As we began our research, we noticed that the majority of the existing art logos didn't incorporate everything that's included within the department. We needed to pull different ideas and inspiration from each of them to put a logo together that fully encompasses the arts. I wanted to make sure I included band, chorus, theater, and the fine arts in my logo idea. I sketched out three different ideas. The one on the left depicts an art palette with splashes of paint coming from behind and symbols representing the different classes under the arts department in the paint palette. The middle idea is a paintbrush, but in place of the bristles, there were instruments and other symbols that represent the arts. The one on the right is the idea I ended up developing further with the paintbrush swiping paint across the canvas. My goal was to make sure I was able to pull all the components of the arts together in each design. My left sketch is an A with a subtle music note on the right with the paintbrush coming across the letter. My middle sketch is a paint splatter with a theater mask in the middle, with music notes also being those splattered paint. My right sketch is a treble clef with a paintbrush as part of the music note, and at the top, a theater mask to include performing arts. When I first started sketching, my mind immediately went to a palette. For each sketch, I added symbols representing each part of the arts department. For the one on the left, I used each symbol as paint on a palette. For the middle one, I went with a text and symbol logo. I drew a paintbrush underlining the word arts, then added each part of the department around it. Finally, I went with a paint splatter, where in each piece of the design, there were symbols representing theater, band, and chorus. Once each of us completed a sketch to develop digitally, we designed our logos in Adobe Illustrator. I took my sketch and I didn't want the mask to look as large, so I put it inside of the note to make it cohesive. Anna's design on the left portrays a paintbrush swiping paint across the canvas with graphics representing the different parts of the arts department. Wyatt's logo on the right shows a paint splatter logo and to clean up his design, he replaced the pencil with the piano. In order to make sure all the logos matched and everything flowed together in a cohesive manner, we handed it over to Daphne Catherman, our lead creative designer. She was responsible for taking each team's digital concept and redesigning them to ensure they all, they all had a similar look and feel. This is the final product after Daphne's edits. The design was simplified to three symbols, a music note representing band and chorus, a clapper to represent performing arts, and a paintbrush representing visual arts. These symbols relate to the many courses offered within the department, such as vocal music, technical theater, instrumental ensemble, and many more. For the Arts Department One Pager, we created an overview, added the new logo and colors, a list of course offerings, and images related to the arts. We then chose this quote from Maria Montessori. Imagination does not become great until human beings, given the courage and the strength, use it to create. After a long time of working on our project and making sure everything we did was up to our liking, we are really proud of the outcome and confident it represents the arts department. And now I hand it off to CTE. Hi, I'm Allie Hancock, and I, along with my fellow partners, BZ Lewis and Marin Fries, created the Career and Technical Education, or CTE, department's new logo and one pager. 
After communicating with Mrs. Turner, the chair of the CTE department, we used the information she gave us to create this brand identity document. We then created an inspiration board to help us capture the concepts we loved for the new logo design. We found symbols such as circles surrounding the department name, a road that represents the path to the CT department, heads with symbols in them that support pathways, and a logo with people combined together. From there, we used those ideas to brainstorm sketches. For my sketches, on the left and on the right, I chose to utilize a road in the design to show the path to the career of your choice and the journey to get there. In the middle, I chose to picture a large amount of symbols to demonstrate the wide variety of courses the department offers. When I created my final design, I used two people walking to portray different career options represented by their uniforms. I found it challenging to create something simple because the CT department has such a variety of pathways. However, I really liked the look of having people in the logo to communicate unity, as you can see in the center sketch. For the sketch to the left, I wanted to try and create a more modern and simple look by combining multiple pictures into the overall image of a computer monitor. As for the sketch on the right, I took those pictures and surrounded them by the words Career and Technical Education Department. In the end, I decided to further explore on my sketch in the middle. The light bulb imagery caught my eye, so I tried to integrate it into my sketches. I also wanted to show variation, so I tried adding in as many symbols as I could in the three sketches to represent all of the CTE courses. After looking through my sketches and discussing my options with my team, I decided to finalize the design with the four light bulbs located on the left. You'll notice that the filaments in those light bulbs represent the many pathways offered by the CTE department. These are our digital logo designs. My logo on the left kept the theme of choosing a path to a career, while Allie, whose logo is in the middle, decided to complete the light bulb look. Beezy's final design on the right kept the unified human-like look while still showing the many CTE courses. We then took the designs to our classmates for feedback and decided to move forward with the illustration in the center created by Allie. From there, we sent the designs off to Daphne to create the new CTE logo. This is the final product after Daphne's edits. The design was simplified to three light bulbs highlighting symbols that can relate to the many CTE pathways. The light bulbs represent engineering and critical thinking. The computer shaped filament correlates to many courses in the department, such as marketing, computer science, the Adobe Academy, and several others. And the house also connects with many courses. For example, interior design, child development, and many other pathways preparing students for life. After updating the one-pager with the necessary information for the CTE department, we added a quote from Steve Jobs that states, your work was going to fill a large part of your life, and the only way to be truly satisfied is to do what you believe is great work. And the only way to do great work is to love what you do. We are confident in the CTE department's new logo and one-pager, which will greatly benefit the staff, students, and parents. Now let's pass things on to the team responsible for branding the English department. Hi, my name is Paige Wynn and my teammates Sophie Jones, Katie Browns and I were tasked with creating a new logo and informational one pager for the English department. We wanted to make sure that the new department logo and one pager would be easy to understand while also being insightful to new students and families. We communicated with the department chairs, Mr. Sheldon and Mrs. Castillo to get their input. Using this information, we filled in the gaps in our research, which helped us make informed choices during the design process. We then began the process of logo design. We first had to look for inspiration by exploring various online examples. Once we discovered some logos, we used them as inspiration to better form ideas. Here you can see the top four. As we researched, we knew that the challenge would be to create something that included communication, reading, and writing. Once we understood what our logos needed to convey, we got to work sketching ideas. Each of us narrowed down our sketches to three options and came together to look at the logos designed by each of us. From those three options, we each chose one to develop digitally. We then made revisions in order to finalize our unique logos and progress into our digital development. 
wanted my designs to encompass a variety of components that represent English. For the logo on the right, I wanted to illustrate someone reaching for a book in order to represent someone reaching for knowledge. The logo in the middle shows a pencil exploding English elements. The logo that I chose to develop was the logo on the left, which takes items like pens, pencils, and books and forms them into a shape of an E for English. When creating my logos, I wanted to incorporate reading, writing, conversation, and critical thinking. I did my best to integrate all of these through books, speech bubbles, writing tools, and thought bubbles. My sketch on the left is an open book with speech bubbles coming out of it and a pencil to the side, as well as a thought bubble coming out of the word English. Side profile of an open book with speech bubbles and a pencil writing. Finally, the logo on the right spells out ELA with the E and L in English, as well as a calligraphy, calligraphy pen at the end to form as it incorporated the most and looked the best. When designing my logos, my goal was to somehow encompass reading, writing, and communication. In order to accomplish this, the sketch on the left utilizes a book, pencil, and speech bubbles. For the center sketch, I wanted to emphasize the book by having the pages open and the word English flowing out of it. The sketch on the right was meant to represent the various courses in the English department while still displaying creativity. After making a few changes to my sketches, I began developing the logo on the left into a book and a feather. Once we completed and revised our sketches, we began the process of making them into digital versions using Adobe Illustrator. This made it possible for our designs to look clean and professional. We then made multiple versions of our logos and our class voted on which one best suited the, the department. After completing the revisions based on the feedback from our peers, our logos to the department includes reading, writing, and communication through an open book and quill. After updating the one pager with the necessary information for the English department, we added in a quote by Alberto Mangel, which says, maybe this is why we read and why in moments of darkness, we return to books to find words for what we already know. After finalizing all these components, we are very proud of our work. We hope you all enjoyed, and we will now pass it over to the team that worked on branding the health and PE department. Hi, I'm Caitlin Stratemeyer. My teammates Parker Smith, Sammy Spencer, and I were tasked with branding the health and physical education, or PE, department by creating a new logo and a one-pager that would represent the department well. After communicating with Mr. Fisher, the department chair of the Health and PE department, we used the information he gave us to create a brand identity document that contained an overview, quote, images, word association, colors, and fonts. This way, we could organize everything in one place. We then began creating inspiration boards to get an idea of how different Health and PE logos look. To start, we looked up logos on the internet and chose several that we liked. This helped generate ideas for our design. These are a few of the images on our inspiration boards. After creating the inspiration board, our next goal was to sketch out thumbnails that would best represent the health and PE department. Our goal was to create something that would showcase the importance of physical fitness and making healthy choices. In the image on the left, I sketched a man running to highlight fitness and a woman stretching or doing yoga to, rep to represent health. With the image in the middle, I drew the words health and PE with a heartbeat leading off the word. And for the image on the right, I sketched six different images that resemble health and PE in the shape of a circle. In the end, I decided to use the image on the left because I thought it represented health and physical fitness best. The goal of my sketches was were to incorporate all the different components of the health and PE department. For the one on the left, I sketched a person running with health and PE related objects over their head. For the one in the middle, I came up with a stopwatch idea and inside of it drew similar objects to the sketch on the left. And for the one on the right, I used the same idea to use the objects, but instead put them on a bookshelf. I moved forward with the one in the middle. 
For my sketches, I wanted to create a simple design that still showed the different components of health and PE. On the left, I used a Venn diagram to separate my three different symbols, a brain, someone running, and a pill and a cigarette to represent drug use. My sketch on the right is my simplest design, which has just the three symbols in it, with the text going vertically in order to add interest. For my sketch in the middle, I used a design of a body with a heart inside of it to represent overall physical health. I made the person hold up an apple, a soccer ball, and a weight. This sketch ended up being my favorite. After we color our thumbnails, we put our design into Adobe Illustrator. Sammy's design located on the left showcases fitness and health. Caitlin's design located in the middle portrays a stopwatch with health and PE related objects inside. I decided to take my sketch located on the right of the man running and the girl stretching and put the words health and PE in the middle of the logo. For our final logo design, we combined Caitlin's stopwatch concept with Parker's heart monitor idea. Daphne then created the final logo with a clean and simple design. After updating the one pager with the necessary information for the health and PE department, we added a quote from Serena Williams that says, I really think a champion is defined not by their wins, but by how they can recover when they fall. We are excited about what we have created and are confident that this branding will give a fresh and updated look to the health and PE department. Now I'll pass it on to the team that worked on branding for the math department. Hello, my name is Eric Dane. Rachel Carr, Ryan Tobler, and I were selected to brand the math department for Middle Creek High School. To start, we communicated with Mrs. Poteet, the chair of the math department, to get her vision. Based on our feedback, we created an identity document to help us consolidate the information to be used for our logo and one page of development. This included color and font preferences, department offerings, and information. We each found some logos that we liked and added them to this board so that we could reference it when creating our own designs. We each took elements from each and used them to start formulating ideas for our own sketches. For my sketches, I wanted to incorporate the different signs and symbols that are commonly associated with math. For example, in the sketch on the left with the calculator, I used the addition, subtraction, multiplication, and division signs, as well as geometric shapes. For the center sketch, I created a graph with the words math department going in a linear direction. For the sketch on the right, I created a protractor, which is often correlated to high school math, creating a half circle with the words math department on the curve. I eventually decided to recreate the calculator logo in Illustrator because it was simple and easily recognizable. For my designs, I wanted to include some type of tool that is used in math. I got this idea from my inspiration board and used it when creating my sketches. I really liked the concept of using white space in our designs, so I incorporated that into the logo on the right. The logo in the middle uses angles to spell out math and is very simple. The logo on the left was my most complex logo because of the details in the background. And after discussing it with the class, we decided that the complex logo would be the one I would continue to work on and develop. For my sketches, I like the idea of showcasing the different symbols used in math. For the one on the left, I wanted to give my logo hidden meaning by having corresponding signs make up the letter M for math. For the sketch in the middle, the idea was to make a logo that incorporated the symbols of math into a tree. At each main branch of the tree, there's an operation sign that expands into smaller branches of the tree. For the last sketch on the right, I wanted to use the entire space that was given to us for the logo. So I made a coordinate plane with graphical axis and the word math, which is composed with points on the graph. After talking with the class, we decided that the one on the right is a logo that I will continue to, to develop digitally. Here are our final products after revisions and alterations. We each took the elements that we liked and created very different designs, which opened up a lot of options for us to choose from. After discussing with the class and continuing to improve our designs, we decided that the logo on the left best represented the math department. Here's the final design after Daphne's revisions. You can see that it is more simplistic, but also has the same feel as the other logos. The calculator is a universal symbol that captures the variety of subjects that are offered by the math department. After updating the one pager with the necessary information for the math department, we added a quote that states, mathematics may not teach us to add love or subtract hate, but it gives us hope that every problem has a solution. 
We are very proud of what we have created together as a team. We would now like to hand it over to the team responsible for branding the science department. I'm Jenna Smith, one of the designers of the science department branding alongside Isabella Haddon and Ezekiel Galvez Cortez. Our team was tasked with creating a new logo and a one page for the Middle Creek Science Department. After communicating with Mrs. Vining and Mrs. Titus, the chairs of the science department, we used the information they gave us to create a brand identity document that included an overview, a quote, the courses offered, images, word and image association, and possible fonts to be used in the logo. After researching existing science logos, we chose these four as the most inspiring. We like the idea of dynamic logos that are still simple and understandable. We were drawn to the clean look of beakers and the atom. We also took to the idea of multiple elements and details as shown in the second logo. After many discussions about our inspiration boards and the concepts we had in mind, we proceeded to sketch draft versions of the science department logo. We endeavored to create an image that encompassed all the scientific subjects taught at our school, while still retaining a simplistic, understandable, and aesthetically pleasing feel. These are my final sketches, which emphasize the clean look I admired so much. I first created a rectangular beaker with plants in order to symbolically combine two very different aspects of science. There's the precision-oriented, technological ambition of human beings in sharp contrast to the independent, free-growing wonder of nature. For the center sketch, I wanted to represent someone who seemed like they were pursuing science. It follows the whole reach for the stars concept. For the sketch on the right, I wanted to incorporate symbols of different elements of science from different classes. I drew a microscope, a beaker, and some vines around the S for science. For my sketches, I wanted to capture some different elements that are typically associated with science. The sketch on the left has the word science as a focal point and has a few different elements of science surrounding it. I tried to make it seem like there were two different shelves being separated by the word science. For the sketch in the middle, the centerpiece is the DNA strand. Its purpose is to separate the ocean with the fish in it and the bacteria. I incorporated a few of the different subjects of science but tried to make a few stand out more than others to have a little bit of a, of a diverse look. In the sketch to the right, I had an atom as a main feature and had different subjects of science and it needs to be gaps in the atom. I also added a ring around the atom containing the word science four times. For my sketches, I drew three different logos that I felt would best represent the department. On the left, I drew the test tube with a small plant and some molecules. I wanted a logo that was dynamic, but not overcrowded. For the center sketch, I followed the same premise, adding an atom to make the logo more coherent. For the one on the right, I drew a few microorganisms to represent a petri dish, almost as if a student was looking into a microscope. I also wanted to incorporate the word science in a more creative format, so I put it inside the largest microorganism. Each team member then selected one of their designs to develop digitally using Adobe Illustrator. Multiple versions, many revisions later. The designs were finalized, these logos are the final product. This is the final logo. Daphne revised the beaker for consistency with the other logos. She cleaned up the beaker measurement lines and moved the leaves over to retain the original idea of contrast within science. After updating the one page with the necessary information for the science department, we added a quote from Louis Pasteur that states, Science knows no country because knowledge belongs to humanity and is the torch which illuminates the world. After a good deal of researching, brainstorming, planning, sketching, designing, revising, and decision making, we are proud to present a new logo and a one pager for the Middle Creek Science Department. We will now hand it over to the Social Studies Department. Hello, my name is Adam Howard, and I worked on the creative team for the Social Studies Department alongside my teammates, Maddie Doolin and Dalton Morales. We worked on creating a new logo and a one-pager for our department. We started the process by asking the chairs, Mrs. Beard and Mr. Arthur, to fill out a Google form to answer various questions. Once we got the replies, we used this information to create a brand identity document. 
Then we created an inspiration board to get some ideas from the internet. We found some really good logos that represented social studies. The four on the screen were most inspiring. The next order of business was to sketch out logo ideas. Social studies is the study of languages, cultures, and history. We all liked the idea of our template being a globe filled with items related to the study of people. From a sketch on the left, I created a globe with the hands of a clock and filled it with various items that represent culture, such as money, important documents, flags, and boats for world trade. From my sketch in the middle, I drew the Statue of Liberty to represent a typical icon that everyone would recognize, and I also added a scale for capital and a flag to represent freedom. For my last sketch, I drew a government building to represent structure and well-being. And I also added a sign symbolizing political propaganda, currency, and added text around the border. For my final design, I made a mix of the first and last sketch. For my sketches, I wanted to bring multiple concepts together in one. I did this by creating icons of objects like a gavel or book. I then took those icons and used them to create multiple logos. For my sketch on the left, I tried a Roman leaf design around a book. For my sketch in the middle, I went with the idea of an open scroll and added an icon different items that represented social studies. And for my sketch on the right, I thought of a globe clock idea. And in the sketch, I also used the icons I designed previously. For my sketch on the left, I wanted to incorporate a book with a glove on the cover. For the metal sketch, I, I separated the book and the glove, but added a compass. For the sketch on the right, I went for a more simple and clean look, which included text, symbols that represent exploration, and a compass over the glove. We then worked in Adobe Illustrator to create different versions of our digital logos. For my logo on the left, I went forward with the globe clock idea using history-related icons for each quadrant. For Dalton's logo in the center, he went with an exploring the globe concept, which he showed by adding boats, an explorer, and a compass icon. And for Adam's logo on the right, he wanted to represent different places on the globe. He did this by using flags, columns, a scale, and images associated with exploration. In the end, we decided to go forward with Delton's logo because we decided that this was the best logo that represented the social studies department. Here's the final logo after Daphne's edits. She removed the text and other images to make the logo less crowded, creating a logo that which in, creating a logo which includes the glow and a white compass. After updating the one pager with the necessary information for the social studies department, we added a quote from Malala Yousafzal that states, I truly believe the only way we can create global peace is through not only educating our minds, but our hearts and our souls. After all the work and effort that we have put into this, we feel very confident that our work will be a great representation of the social studies department. Now we would like to hand it off to the special education department. Hi, I'm London Dove, and these are my teammates, Daphne Katherman and Dylan McConaughey. We are the team responsible for creating and designing the one pager and logo for the special education department. The process was started by communicating with the department chair, Dr. Morris, to gather information to accurately depict the special education department. This document allowed us to organize our ideas and gather all necessary information. We then began looking for inspiration and found these four images that match the themes present in special education branding. We pulled aspects from each image to create our designs. Each of us sketched three logos and then met together and decided on our favorites. For my sketches, I tried to incorporate the puzzle concept, which is commonly associated with special education into each of, each of the designs. For the sketch on the left, I made the puzzle pieces into a heart and had a hand under it to symbolize togetherness and teamwork. For the middle sketch, I made puzzle pieces take the form of an apple and put a heart in the middle. Finally, for the sketch on the right, I made a hand out of puzzle pieces and also put the heart in the middle. For my sketches, my goal is to combine both puzzle pieces and hands. The left sketch includes the puzzle piece aspect, but in order to add the hand element, I furthered the concept in the right two sketches. For the sketch in the middle, I was able to design two clasped hands made of puzzle pieces to form a heart. And for the right sketch, a hand made of puzzle pieces 
with the hidden element of an upside down heart inside. In the end, we decided that the center sketch included every element while still being simple and easy to understand. It would be the one I would develop in Illustrator. When sketching logo concepts, I like the look of puzzle pieces, but I also like the look of heart to show kindness and love. My sketches shown on the left is hands holding up a heart with a puzzle inside. I thought this had a good, good meaning and look while incorporating both elements. For the center sketch, I had four puzzle pieces and a square around a heart, which gave it a very simple look, including two elements. The right sketch had a brain and puzzle pieces inside. I wasn't in love with this, but I thought it had a good concept. In the end, I went with the four puzzle piece design with a heart in the middle. From there, we each chose one logo to develop in either Illustrator or Gravit. Here is our final three designs. After receiving feedback from the class, it was decided that Daphne's heart made of hands design in the center would be the one to finalize. This is our finished logo for the special, special education. We, are combined, we combined the puzzle pieces, hand and heart concepts to create one cohesive design. After updating the one pager with the necessary information for the special education department, we chose this quote from Rita Pearson. Every child deserves a champion, an adult who will never give up on them, who understands the power of connection and insists that they become the best that they can possibly be. We are confident that the new logo and one pager will benefit the special education department. Our team was also in charge of creating the logo and one pager for the World Languages Department. We started off the same way with an email sent to the, to the Department Chair of World Languages, World Languages, Dr. Sablowski, to gather information for our brand identity document. We again used this document as a place to organize all of our ideas. After creating the board, we began looking for inspiration by having each teammate find images that match the themes present in World Languages logos. These four images inspired us most. As you can see, we were drawn to the globe and speech bubble concept. When working on my logo, I automatically knew I wanted to use the globe in my designs. I also loved the idea of using the banners and flags. For the sketch on the left, I created a banner with a globe in the middle. For the middle sketch, I created a globe that has five different ways of saying hello in other languages with a banner in the middle. Lastly, on the sketch on the right, I created a half of a globe with a person running on top holding a blank flag. I also put a banner on the actual globe. I decided to move forward with the sketch on the left. I found creating logos was a bit of a challenge because using maps and globes look very similar to social studies. I really like the look of having flags on a globe, so I try to incorporate it into both my sketches. The left sketch has arrows circulating around the world. I thought this had a cool look and made it seem as if it was rotating. For the center sketch, I used the world again to symbolize all the countries and the Roman leaves that go along with the theme. The right sketch was very simple and to point with three blank flags symbolizing the different countries and languages they may have. This created a nice variety and I ended up going with a simple flag design. For my World Languages logo sketches, I ended up making multiple designs with the repeated theme of incorporating a globe and a speech bubble. These three were my final options, with both the left and the center sketches having a section of the globe speech bubble, while the one on the right was a globe in the shape of a speech bubble, with the variety of languages surrounding it. From these three, we decided that the rounded speech bubble of the center sketch worked best with the shape of the globe, as well as with the World Languages department the center sketch would be the one I would move forward to develop in Illustrator. After we all finished our sketches, we recreated our top sketch in Illustrator to decide which one would be the best fit for our department. Daphne then revised the concept to create this as our final logo. My, by combining the logo, the globe and speech bubble concept, this logo represents languages from around the world. After updating the one page with our department information, we chose this quote from Frank Smith. One language sets you in a corridor for life. 
two languages open every door along the way. We are confident that the new logo and one pager will benefit the World Languages Department and are looking forward to seeing it used by the school. We would now like to hand it over to Jenna, Paige, and Allie to conclude the presentation. We are excited to have accomplished our three main goals, which were to create an academic logo for the school as a whole, to design department logos that fit into the academic logo, and finally, to assemble one pages for each academic department to be used at special events. We are especially proud of how all of the elements work together to highlight our school's STEM accreditation and unique offerings. By communicating with each other and working towards a common goal, we were able to make new logos that are simple, memorable, versatile, and appropriate. And one pagers for each department that have a cohesive and simple look and that elevate the school's professionalism. On behalf of the entire team, I would like to thank you for your time and attention today. We are honored to have been given the chance to create something meaningful and useful for Middle Creek High School. We want to give a special thanks to Principal Peckham for trusting us with this task. We would also like to thank Ms. McGronigal, our Assistant Principal of Instruction, Ms. Council, our Academy Coordinator, and all of the department chairs for working so closely with us throughout the process. This concludes the Sophomore Adobe Digital Media Academy Academic Branding Campaign for Middle Creek High School. We would now like to open up the floor for any questions or comments. Mr. Petty, can you go back to the slide with all the logos so that our, um, our audience members can see some of their designs when they ask their questions? Um, and if you guys want to, we can go um, group by group. So anyone in the audience that would like to um, chime in, just go ahead and unmute your microphone and you can um, ask a question or give comments and feedback on our groups. So we'll start with the arts department. Uh, so if you have a comment or a question for this group, go ahead and unmute and you can just pop right in there. Hi, yeah, so for a general comment, um, if I wasn't warned beforehand that this was high school, I would not have believed that. Uh, this looks incredible from all of you. Um, but for the, the arts department one, um, I'm curious, because it seemed like from the, the first three sketches that you had, um, there were three very different ideas. So what was it like kind of getting practice with coming together and, and getting this one uh, logo here and this one theme? Um, from those three very different ideas. Well, for me, I thought it was just a great experience, you know, um, coming together with my teammates, it was Molly and Anna. And, uh, you know, we all had, you know, we had general ideas of what to go off when it came to arts. But uh, when we came together, we kind of, you know, it, you're right, it did come off as three different things, but, you know, it represented same, you know what I'm saying? Hi, I'm I'm Lily. Um, I just wanted to do a quick blanket statement. Um, I'm at a restaurant right now, so if people are loud, I'm so sorry. But I wanted to join and still see it. Um, I just wanted to say like how like um, taken back I am by how talented you guys are. Um, I was in the Digital Media Academy like two years ago. Um, and I'm now a sophomore in college, and half of the sophomores in college could not do what you guys just did. Um, hi, Mr. Silva. Um, you guys spoke so well and so mature, and your transitions from how you handed it off to your next person um, was just so well spoken. Um, I'm so impressed by all your logos. Like, oh my gosh, I could not do anything like that when I was. Um, a sophomore. I mean, I could go and on and on about how impressed I am, but I just wanted to say that blanket statement that you guys should be so proud of yourselves. I know like this time has been so hard and working from home and not being able to get the feedback in person has probably been so challenging, but just everyone give yourselves like a pat on the back. Like this is so impressive. You guys should be so proud of yourselves. Thank you so much, Ali. I definitely want to echo all of what you said. You guys are doing an amazing job. Um, I wanted to see if anyone from uh, the wanted to comment or give questions to our CTE group. I'll say something. Um, 
I thought you guys did an absolutely amazing job. Um, to come up with a logo that covers so many different curricula is an insane um, uh, task to go and put upon yourselves, and you guys knocked it out of heart. I mean, that, that English logo, amazing. Um, I have a question. How long did it take to come up? And this, this could be any of you. Any of you can answer this. But how long did it take to come up with your initial iterations for just one of these ideas? Can, can I say it? Go ahead. All right, for me personally, for I know the one that, um, cause I did the math department. I know the one for the, the one that I ended up doing digitally was the graphic one with the lines. That one I had to come up and finish drawing in five minutes. Because the, the assignment was like due in like five minutes, I had to do it like so quick. All the other ones I did last night, but that was the one that I struggled on. So when Mr. Petty said like you you gotta take a picture of this and it and put it on Google Classroom, I was like, oh, I just draw something, and that's what ended up actually being the one that I do on uh, Adobe. Same here. It didn't take me very long either. <laughs> I did it for the assignment. I think a reason that it didn't take very long is because DMA is so like cooperative. So we're constantly talking to each other and getting feedback and stuff. And we're able to take something that isn't so good. And some of the sketches are revised sketches that we had. So we were able to um, take those before sketches and make them into even better sketches with the help of everyone. And I just want to say, we've been working on this since September. And it's, it's been this whole process of just taking it a bit at a time. So first we like got with our groups and started the initial sketches. Then those got approved. Then we moved on to colored sketches. Then those got approved. Then we moved to digital. Those got approved. It's this whole process that we got to. And each of us, there was where we'd come in some days and the teachers would be like, oh my gosh, this is awful. And then there'd be other days where the teachers would be like, this is the best logo ever. And it's, it's a roller coaster of emotions, just seeing whether your idea is gonna be pu pushed onto the next level or is it gonna be thrown in the trash? And it was a great experience of how the actual workplace is gonna be because your heart's gonna be broken, but also you'll be really happy some days if it gets approved. <laughs> so it's been very interesting. <laughs> that was really well said, Maddie. Like that um, was great feedback. So great to see all of you guys coming together and working on this and the process that you guys went through. Um, I wanted to, I'm not going to go through each individual department because it seems like everyone has like a lot to say to the whole group. So if you want to go ahead and, and um, shout out a comment or a question to the whole group, feel free to do that. Uh, Ms. Council, based on what Maddie just said there, it kind of triggered my question that I wanted to ask if I could ask that now. Um, so I just wanted to say, you know, as other people have already noted, uh, that this project is incredibly impressive, especially given that, you know, you all completed it while everybody was collaborating remotely. Um, I am a former Middle Creek Academy teacher, so I know for a fact that these cohort size projects are already challenging enough in a traditional classroom environment. Um, so definitely credit to all of you for being able to complete this project in the fashion that you did. Um, and I can also say with certainty that many business professionals right now are struggling with that transition to working completely remotely and not being able to collaborate in person. So my question for some of you all is, uh, what techniques and methods did you all use to work together um, so seamlessly despite having your physical distance from each other? Um, mainly asking so that I can refer back to my own coworkers and hopefully improve our processes. Snapchat. Um, I would say for our group, the CTE department, I previously already had their numbers, so we would just get in like a big group call and talk about it and share the document with each other so we could edit on things. Um, but for people who are working and might not have it, um, Google Meet was a really good site and you can create breakout rooms. So you can all be in there by yourselves and discuss things. And yeah, I would definitely say share the documents with each other so you can all make your additions. Um. I, I think one of our groups did this. I, I think they didn't have their numbers or like Adam said, snap, their Snapchats or anything like that. They just oh, like shared a, doc, a Google document with each other and just type that way. 
But I think all of our groups, like every single team here, like had a group chat of some kind. Like our group did it on Instagram. We just made it like a group chat there. And like most groups had like a text group chat. So I think group chats really like helped us all stay connected. And we just really had to be like patient with each other because sometimes like we wouldn't be there when we needed each other. So we just had to be patient and ask whoever we could. I just want to say I'm very impressed with this group. All the logos like look really good. Um, I do really like how you took your final logo designs and sent them to one person to revise them because then every single logo looks very good together and not like someone completely different made each logo. They're all very cohesive with each other. Um, and I was just wondering like who decided to do that because that way they all look very together. And that would be our queen Daphne who took yeah. all the logos and put them I don't all know together. Who decided to do that, but I just uh, I guess I just had sort of an interest in making logos and I was really interested in working on it and Mr. Petty gave me the go ahead to he sent me all the files after everyone did you know had their each group had their completed logos and I I just independently worked on them while uh, other groups worked on the one pagers so I guess Mr. Petty was the one who decided that. <laughs> I'm just very impressed. And uh, Daphne, you're very, very talented. I just wanted to say that. And um, you all did a really good job on this. I, I know exactly how it is. I'm a senior in the academy. We did um, the Fish House project, and that took us a while. And we had to work through that virtually. So I know exactly how it is. And good job, guys. Yeah, so kind of piggybacking off of Natalie, I just wanted to give um, Daphne a lot of props because I know that's a hard task to like be that one central person to be like making the final logos but I think they came out like amazing um like every time you went to like the final slide and it was like this is the final logo I was like so impressed every single time um I just like I'm in the senior digital media academy and some of these ideas that y'all that everyone came up with like I was like wow that's a really good idea I would have never thought of that um just kind of picking out the special needs one like that's three different types of logos that they put in one but it's still so simple and i just I'm very blown away i think it was really awesome hey so uh yeah my name is uh <clears throat> danny smith i'm a class of 2019 digital media graduate and i just want to say that the stuff that you guys are doing as sophomores is insanely talented compared to you know what we were what i was doing when i was a sophomore i think i was just making you know dancing cans and the sandwich project and stuff like that so seeing that the the bar you know i think they mentioned in the beginning of the presentation but the culture around the digital media academy is that you know the bar just keeps getting raised for the next class <clears throat> when i see that's happening still because you know this is like i could see this being like professional great work so just, I don't really have any questions. I just wanted to say that this is insanely good. And I'm really proud of all you guys, especially my sister, Jenna, you know? So yeah, good job guys. Hey y'all, um, my name is Chad and I graduated from the Digital Media Academy in 2015. Um, and I was sticking around Middle Creek a while um, as a student teacher. Um, first of all, like everybody else said, I'm so impressed. Um, and I, not just with the technical skills, but with the taste level as well. Um, I think that that is really hard to develop and I think that you all have done that very well. So props to you. Um, my question is about the color scheme. Um, I noticed that um, you used similar colors throughout and that it seemed like there was one or two main colors for each one. So I wanted to know, um, was anybody in charge of that or was it just kind of something that you all organically decided together? So that was uh, Miss Council picked out the color scheme. It was like 10 different colors. It was from Pantone. She just picked a preset set of swatches and that's uh, what I used. And I made sure, you know, Mr. Petty said use two or three for each so that when we were translating it into the one pager, uh, everything worked good with like the banners and everything. And I made sure to 
uh, repeat a color. If it was used in one logo, I would use it in another. So. Awesome job. Hey, so my name is Aaron Howard. Um, uh, I graduated part of the class of 2020 uh, Digital Media Academy. And uh, as such, I did a whole bunch of presentations, both part of the academy and outside of the academy. And this is more on the presentation side than content, but presenting to a computer is much harder, in my opinion, than presenting to a group of people. You have to try to put inflection and emotion into your words to a group of people that you just can't really see and interact and sort of vibe with, if you will. And so I think that y'all guys did a really good job engaging the audience and acting personable through a really difficult technology barrier. Thank you. Uh, one thing I just want to say, um, I'm in the senior digital media academy class and I know how difficult it is to, you know, communicate over a presentation and give that presentation. Um, but you guys did a really good job. I'm really impressed with the logos. Um, a few of us in the senior academy were just texting back and forth and trying to, you know, place bets on what the final logo would be um, based off it. And we had a really fun time keeping up with it. And I'm really impressed with all, I think, nine logos that you guys created. So um, I'm out $5 from this, but, you know. I got five bucks out of it. Yeah. But, uh, yeah, really impressive job and uh, really creative and uh, good job to all of you. I'll go ahead and jump here, or jump in here for a second um, in between all the alumni um, feedback, which is amazing to see. Um, I just want to say thank you for the work that you've done on this project. I'm sorry I had to be a little bit late. I um, have some meetings that I couldn't get out of, but I caught it and I look forward to going back and watching the presentations. I think I missed two of them, the CTE and the arts, but um, I will catch up on that after this meeting. But it looks amazing. And I just want to say, you know, Ms. Council and I met early on in the semester and had a conversation about possibilities. And I think I'll speak for myself and say I had dis I was disappointed that you all wouldn't get some of the kind of more outreachy type of assignments to work on. And so um, we, we really tried hard to come up with some ideas. And, and I want to say that where it landed, I honestly can say that maybe this is a situation where the pandemic was a blessing. And, you know, I know that's I would never say that, but I will say it here and just say I think it gave um, Middle Creek uh, the opportunity to reap the benefits of your work and creativity. And this assignment actually um, turned your energies and your expertise and all of your hard work internal to our school. And this is going to have a huge impact on us. And I just want to say thank you for that. Um, the branding looks so professional, more professional than colleges and other businesses that I've seen. And so just knowing that our community is going to be able to use these and engage with these materials and that you will know that your designs are a part of um, just something that represents our whole school. I, I, I think that our teachers probably felt really seen getting to interact with you and coming up with these logos and give preferences and ideas, um, even if it was a Google form. I just think this was a really awesome um opportunity and what you guys did with it far surpassed i mean i knew i i, I have i, I feel like I, I can say that i know we're going to get amazing things out of every group of academy students but every time i show up it far exceeds my already immensely high expectations and i'm just thrilled at the product and you guys presented amazingly well um, I'll echo some of what everyone else said, but this was awesome. I'm so grateful for your work. This looks beautiful and you couldn't have done it better. So good job to all the groups. Hey, I'm in CTE at Broughton and Ms. Council has shared some of your work with us before in our Academy coordinator meetings. Um, I honestly had no idea what I was coming to look at today. I just saw the invite in my email and I hadn't kept up apparently. Um, so when I saw it was going to be educational logos, I was like, oh, man, that's going to be kind of lame because we have a history of like really bad logos for schools and, or not for schools, but for programs and things like that. And I think y'all probably have seen that for some of the stuff y'all had in your inspiration boards and all that. They're not always the most visually appealing. A lot of times they try to do a lot. I know as teachers, we all are really protective about our particular classes and programs. So I'm sure, especially if y'all did arts and CTE, like every teacher wanted their program represented in 
in in the logo. So I think y'all did an awesome job of making them not doing too much and not having a ton of text on there and not every single logo for every CTE class or every arch class or whatever. And it still represents everything, but it's not like overwhelming where it's just like going to be a mess to like replicate anything. It's going to be unclear. It's going to be really busy. So that was like, it just really blew me away because um, that was kind of not what I think I've been trained to see in <laughs> logos coming from um, academic programs and they look really, visually appealing and also just really clean and clear on what they're representing and like i hope y'all get the credit for designing this because i i mean i know you will but i hope people recognize when they see this that y'all did this because my assumption would have been like oh someone at the school just spent a long time creating some really great logos that fit for them rather than y'all you know going through that whole process and designing like the perfect logos for that so um, i'm rambling i don't know what else i had to say but great job Thank you, Spencer. So I just wanted to also reiterate some of the same things that Spencer and some of the other folks have said. Um, this is just amazing and you guys have done an amazing job. And I think I'm interested to see how many of you will pursue a career in this field. Um, so I don't know if any of you, you know, want to show your hands if this is something you plan to do in the future. Um, I'm just curious as to see what impact this has had sometimes it's important to find out what you don't want to do as well so some of you may have figured out this is not what you want to do but just curious anybody planning to pursue a career um, in this type of work so let's do thumbs up if this is something you're interested in or thumbs down if you realize this is not what you're interested in <laughs> mr penny got the thumb up and I see some going by not quite sure yet. So you guys have plenty of time to figure this out, but um, great job guys, great job. Yeah, I think this was definitely a good experience. Like even though I might wanna focus more on like, vis like video editing and stuff like that, this like did show me like what an actual career could be like and it was very interesting and exciting. I mean, I think it's super cool because, like, we know how to use, like, Illustrator and Photoshop, which are, like, crazy, like, professional programs that they actually use places. So, like, the fact that we even, like, had the tools and were able to do stuff like this is just an experience in itself, and I'm so grateful for it. See, this whole project has reminded me of, like, being in a real workspace, and I love that the teachers won't just say like, oh, go redo that, that's not good or anything. For each project, I see Mr. Petty, he'll write like, things you've done good and then things you need to improve on. So it's not a tilde like crash down of your hopes and dreams, but it's, it's showing you how to collaborate and talk to different people and just get everyone's ideas together and agree on, okay, this doesn't work, let's try this again and just figuring out if we like what we're doing or not. So I, it's been a very interesting experience. <laughs> I'd love to hear from some of our professionals outside of the education community. I know that we have a few people that are actually in industries related to um, digital media and graphics and videos stuff like that if you are one of those people and you'd like to um, weigh in on how this relates to what you do in the professional world we'd love to hear that hi uh, this is uh, John Gordon from North Carolina State University uh, we've had uh, some of uh, Academy uh, folks in our shop uh, as interns we we produce video mostly um, I, I everyone else is talked about how blown away they are. I am uh, I'm putting myself into that same category. Uh, one of the questions I wonder about is rhetorical is, uh, where do you go now? So as sophomores, you guys have stepped up and produced this really, really good work. My gosh, you still have junior and senior year to go. So very excited to see where you head. I also wanted to uh, give a shout out just to the academy in general and the community that uh, clearly is formed with the uh, 
uh, with the uh, seniors supporting the sophomores coming into this call and then uh, graduates calling from restaurants <laughs> calling in uh, because everyone cares so much. So that's great. I encourage everyone to take a good hard look at North Carolina State University when the time comes because we would love to see this kind of talent at our university. Very, very good job. Uh, one, one more observation. Thank you for the go packs. Uh, one more observation. Um, that stuff about teamwork. I was, as I was listening to you all talk about teamwork, I've, I work on teams. I, every day I work on teams and have for many years. And the kinds of things that you guys are talking about, about teamwork, uh, is so critical. It's, and you're already getting that experience. So, uh, the Academy is really doing right by you guys. It really is. Feel very happy and fortunate you are where you are. Uh, anyways, thanks for inviting me in on this. It's been a great afternoon. Thank you so much, yeah, Mr. Gordon. Love the pack shout out. Um, but yeah, my, my name is Jason. I, I work at uh, Fidelity as an experience designer. And I think one of the best things about what I've been hearing and, and, and seeing in this is the fact that you guys got to work not only in teams, but with clients. Uh, it, it totally depends on the field you end up going to, but uh, I think it's safe to say the likelihood that you get to design in a vacuum all by yourself from start to finish is, is pretty low. And so you already getting that experience uh, working with clients who potentially might disagree with you <laughs> when it comes to the best design that you, that you like working with teammates that might have the same feelings as that. Um, those are those are things that I've seen a lot of designers not really learn until you get to college and have to start working on group projects in design school or at your first job when you have that first disagreement. So the, the fact that you guys are doing this, I think you, you are so far ahead when it comes to getting internships, what, what those are gonna be like, how you can interact with people. Because um, throughout, we've done a lot of hiring and I've sat in on a lot of interviews. And one of the things that we always look for is uh, you can always develop the hard skills. You can develop the ability to make these beautiful things, to make these great designs, but those soft skills are the ones that are, are really hard to see at first. And those are what people are really looking for. So in the future, when you are, are looking for internships, I know senior year, I think for the Academy, you have to do that. But when you're looking for internships, when you're looking for jobs, being able to say, I worked on this. I worked with a team. We worked with a client. I, I think that's just such a huge win for you guys. So. Thank you so much, Jason. I did want to jump in and say that when I reflect back on the Academy experience, it's not just about creating you know, beautiful things, even though that's a major part of it, you're going to take with you the ability to rationalize and justify your decisions to, able, to be able to represent yourself and your brand and to present your work. Um, and that's invaluable wherever you end up. Um, so make sure you hold on to that experience. We have a few more minutes before our class ends. So if there's any parents or administrators, other teachers on the call that would like to um, chime in, feel free to do so. All right, judging by your silence, I can say that pretty much all of us are just super impressed and we've all been saying it over and over again. So uh, it's pretty much been, um, you know, repeated by every single person in the, the community here. You guys did an amazing job. We are so, so proud of what you've done. Uh, we're looking forward to every project that comes out of you guys from this point on. Uh, it's only gonna go up from here. Thank you so much to all of our audience members. Thank you parents for being here to support your children. Thank you all of our uh, former Academy students, all of our current Academy students supporting each other, our staff, our parents, um, our admin team, the people from um, central office who are doing all the work behind the scenes to make this happen. Um, we just appreciate all of you and, and especially our, our business community that have taken time out of their days to really support you guys and, and show 
how important what your work, the work that you're doing is. Uh, thank you everyone for being here. Great job. Thank you so much, uh, Mr. Petty and Ms. Da Silva for um, just raising the bar every year up to this academy. Um, do either one of you guys want to say anything before we wrap this up? Yeah, I think we both do. So Mr. Silva, do you want to go first? Yeah. So, um, you know, once again, I, I think we told you this morning how incredibly proud we are of the work that you've done this semester, especially considering that this has all been virtual. I mean, we have not met with you one time in person. You've not met with each other in person. And the work that you've created is just outstanding. Um, and like so many people have said, um, you took part in something that absolutely mimics experiences that you will have in whatever ever profession you end up um, going into. But just really well done. Presentation was beautiful. Um, your designs were beautiful. The one pagers are beautiful. So good job. Yeah, I'll echo those words in terms of proud, right? I think, you know, as as those of you guys, parents that are still here, you know, you, you always want to be, um, you know, find something for your, your children that they're passionate about, right? And, you know, I know Ms. McDougall mentioned, well, some of you figured out that this is what you want to do, and some of you figured out well, it's not what you want to do. And I think finding that passion is really, really important. And, I, you know, my hope is that as you kind of have seen a lot of the Academy members that have come back, that have graduated, that they're in college, that have graduated college, that are in business, um, that have come back, you know, that part of what you learn here is not just the technical skills, it is how to work together and how to do presentations and, um, you know, how to come up with the end result that you are proud of. And that was the thing I mentioned to you guys this morning is, you know, we're proud of what you've done. Make sure you're proud of what you've done. You guys should all be really, really excited of what you've created because you've got something where you've left your mark on this high school that will last well beyond when you guys are gone. Um, you know, I mean, these deliverables that you guys have made will be utilized to benefit so many future students uh, and parents and to the teachers, you know, as we get together and once again in person, you know, for open houses and meet the teacher nights and all those things are such a great traditions of our school. You guys are now part of that for many, 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 many years to come. And that's something to be proud of. Um, you know, and in terms of where you guys are as sophomores, you know, I, I don't know that we can mention enough, you know, how, how amazing it is at this level, you know, and, and Mr. Gordon mentions, well, what's next? Well, you know, what's coming, you know, this, that's what we do. We push, right? We push you for excellence and you guys, you just got to show it every time. So, so super proud of you guys. Um, and I want to add to, to Mr. Green's comment as well about how did you guys do this? You know, and I think I still come back to the word family. Right. You guys were put together as a family last year and your time as freshmen was cut short because of, you know, when the pandemic hit, you really didn't get to have an academy class as freshmen like most freshmen do. And so you really grew as a group this year, you know, like Maddie said, from September till now, like you really learn what process is and feedback is and revision is and, you know, having to redo and redo and redo, you know, but go through the whole thing of research and ideation and sketching and revision, you know, and collaborating and to come with a final product, you know, and then Daphne, for you to take on the, the very large challenge that, you know, I threw at you of taking everybody's logo and making them cohesive. Um, I know you made a thousand different changes of things that I said to you to change little things here and there. Um, and it takes a special person to be able to do that. You know, it takes a special team of you guys working to be able to do that. You know, and to answer Mr. Green's question about how we did it, we're a family. That's how we did it. You know, and you see all of these people that come back, they're still part of our family. You know, and that's what you get out of the academy when you're done. You get the technical skills, but you have a family that lasts a whole lot longer than four years. Um, and that's a very, very special. And I think it's very, very rare. And when you have that kind of support with each other, amazing things like this can happen, like what you see, you know, from this presentation. So, 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 so very proud of all you guys. Um, you know, can't say enough about, you know, how talented you guys are, how special you guys are, and how amazed we are about all you guys. So from the bottom of my heart, I thank you guys for everything.